Hello, Flimsy Lunch Tray here with you today, and we are going to be doing another upgrade and commander build video, and this time featuring the British Light Cruiser Tier 9 Neptune. So, let's get on with it. So, Neptune, uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with the British Light Cruisers, um, but I'm assuming you already have her, and that's partially why you're here. But, uh, and being a light cruiser, um, as you move up the line, um, these cruisers are notoriously um, rather light armored, uh, but very easily able to be citadel. Um, hence, the citadel armor belt right here. Um, so, she's like Edinburgh, she's like Fiji, um, as you move up the line, but um, you're, she's quite squishy if you give too much side, uh, especially broadside, uh, to enemy cruisers, enemy battleships, um, and you'll just get punished for it. Um, even sh sitting broadside in smoke screens uh, is also very dangerous because battleship and cruiser players know of this weakness, and they'll sometimes even take the gamble and blind fire you in a smoke screen. So it's always best if you can angle in a smoke screen um, against your targets. Um, just because you can see there, there's not a lot of armor going on. Um, you know, even if you look at the deck plating, um, it's not a lot going on. You know, most armored areas, you know, you have the, the conning tower, but then you get down to the, uh, the gun mount armor, and then just the citadel. So she's quite squishy. Um, so as a result, uh, the type of cruiser she is, she's a light cruiser, um, but she's not necessarily made for a close battle engagement like brawling to a certain extent if you do that you have to play it really well around islands or utilizing smoke um, but she kind of likes to be keep you at range um, where she can get the most damage in that's that's the best play style i found with her uh, thus far uh, as i've enjoyed playing her in the bronze league and ranked a lot so let's look at the upgrades well, first we're going to look at modules actually um, as you can see, um, she's got three um, modules. Uh, she's got the Neptune uh, B hull, which is going to give you additional armor. Uh, I mean, not armor, but increasing your health pool. And also some additional maneuverability. Uh, then you've got the upgrade of torpedoes, uh, where you get uh, increased maximum damage. And then her gunfire control system uh, with this module upgrade. And um, you go from like it's 15.04 kilometers to uh, 16.5 kilometers. Um, and it was really till I got her fully upgraded um, that I felt like I got the most potential um, out of Neptune. Uh, since usually if you get shot, it's more like you're getting chunked because um, you want to take as less fire as possible. Um, and that's another thing, when you're um, playing the Neptune, honestly, um, you want to angle as much as you can. Because if you're driving straight away from an enemy battleship that's behind you, it's very easy for them to just uh, come through. Let's see if I can get rid of this, some of this stuff. Uh, see how massive your... Uh, see, that should just be the Citadel. Yeah, do you see how massive... <laughs> your citadel deck plating is 38 millimeters if you're not angled and you're just sailing away it's so easy to get citadel through the deck because your deck plating uh you know 16 millimeters that's all you get um so ideally you always want to be angled when you're um moving away from enemy ships um, so that's all the upgrades there or for the module. So I definitely encourage you to get this as soon as possible because it will really help improve your gameplay. It did for me, uh, especially in ranked. And looking at our first slot, uh, we have the main armaments modification one, which I recommend taking. Uh, the other two is the auxiliary armaments modification one, which just increases your secondary battery and your AA, both which are relatively all right already. And you don't need to take magazine modification one because you have the Juliet Charlie combat signal, which uh, completely eliminates the risk of your ship's magazine detonating. So get the biggest bang for your buck um, in improving your main armaments uh, because what this uh, upgrade does is it reduces the risk 
of your main battery and your two Pareto tubes from becoming incapacitated by negative 20%. Um, your main battery and torpedo tube survivability increases by 50%, and then your main battery repair and your torpedo tube repair time um, is reduced by 20% if those uh, main armaments do become incapacitated. Um, so you really want to have, um, really also, I mean, your torpedoes are just so good, like you want to keep those, um, increase the survivability on those versus secondaries or AA. Um, you have a couple options. For the second slot, um, you have the damage control system modification one, which reduces the risk of catching fire, uh, risk of flooding. Uh, the other standard one is the engine room protection, uh, which reduces the risk of incapacitation of an accelerates repair of the engine and steering gears. Um, thus far, I've taken the damage control system modification. There are two other upgrades um, you could choose for uh, slot two. Uh, the first, as you see here, is the Surveillance Radar Modification 1, uh, which increases the action time of the Surveillance Radar Consumable. So with Neptune, you get the choice uh, of Smoke Generator or the Surveillance Radar. So right now, the action time of the radar is 38.5 seconds, and you have a 10-kilometer detection of ships. Um, so then if you add the surveillance radar, which increases the action time by 20%. So you're gonna go from, I'll do the math for you real quick. Uh, 38, I did this right. You're gonna go from 38.5 seconds to 46.2 seconds. Um, so you can really bully <laughs> uh, destroyers in the area. Um, the surveillance radar, um, is not a bad option by any means. Um, I've been just been playing a lot of ranked um, in Neptune, and I haven't come across many matches with maybe just one destroyer, um, or I've even had some with no destroyers. So for me, that I've gotten the, the more money is worth out of the smoke generator stuff thus far. But that could be a different story uh, when it comes to randoms. Um, so you have this modification. You also have in the armory, um, I've been saving up my coal again. You have uh, the hydroacoustic search uh, buff. And I'm not sure what exactly they call it. But I will show you guys regardless so you know what all options you can get. As that takes a hot minute. Yeah, hydroacoustic search modification one. Uh, increases action time of the consumable of the hydroacoustic search and short range hydroacoustic search consumables um, by 20%. And with coupon, you can get it for 12,750 coal. So, if hydroacoustic search um, is more of what you want for Neptune, you have an action time right now of 110 seconds. And if you use the hydroacoustic search modification one for the slot two, uh, your action time is going to go from 110 seconds to 232 seconds. Um, so it's up to you if whether or not you take that. Um, honestly, that's probably what I am going to take. Um, you know, for the heck of it. Well, I'm actually about to. I'm going to get it for Minotaur actually, but. Um, I would recommend probably taking that one, but if you're running, if you're more of a using radar more often, then you probably want to take that one. But if you just have only these two options starting out, then just go with damage control system modification one. For the slot three modification, you get several options. You get a main battery modification two, which increases your main battery traverse speed, uh, secondary battery modification, which increases your firing range and also the dispersion uh, of your secondary battery is decreased. You get a gun modification, you get an aiming systems modification, and you get torpedo tubes modification. Myself, I like the maximum dispersion of my main battery shells being reduced by negative 7%, the torpedo tube traverse speed uh, increased by 20%, and the secondary battery firing range increased by positive 5%, and then also that maximum dispersion of the secondary battery uh, decreased by 5%. Um, because for me, I'm really trying to focus on building up the main guns, so I really uh, I really want that negative 7% uh, on the dispersion uh, for the main battery shells, so I'm getting tighter grouping 
um, because often you're dealing with destroyers or, I mean, specifically uh, cruisers. But then when you get the chance to smoke up and farm, you know, something like a battleship, you those type groupings help you get uh, higher potential damage. So that's what I like to run. Uh, for slot four, you get the option between damage control system modification two, which accelerates the fire extinguishing time and recovery from flooding by negative 15%, or you get the steering gears modification uh, one, which reduces your rudder shift time by negative 20%. I take this because it helps me avoid more incoming fire, kind of how we talked about. But if you're running away from targets and something like a battleship is shooting at you and you know how thin your deck armor is and how huge your citadel is, um, I like to be able to have that maneuverability to uh, potentially uh, dodge and avoid uh, taking that uh, heavy damage. For slot five, you get four options. Um, I recommend taking the Concealment System Modification 1 because you really want to uh, work on your concealment for the light cruiser line. Uh, and Neptune is no exception to that uh, because of how squishy they are. And so the, the, the smaller your concealment radius, um, the better off you are. Um, so I think when you start off with the ship, I'll pull it up. I want to tell you guys what it was stock since I already have it on. Uh, your surface detectability range stock is 13.14 kilometers. Um, so this reduces your detectability range by 10% by sea and by air. And also um, for squadron detectability range is decreased. And then dispersion of shells fired by enemies attacking your ship um, is increased by 5%. So that's, that's a good thing. So um, this works uh, really well. There's also the steering gears modification too, which reduces your rudder shift time further uh, by negative 40%. So that would be, you'd be your rudder shift <laughs> is really good because right now it is 8.6 seconds. And then if you take this uh, 40%, you're what? You're getting closer to five seconds. Yeah. Um, so one could take that, but I like the concealment because right now the concealment is 10.6 and I also have concealment expert on uh, the commander. But when we also add in something like a camouflage, being rather slow today, um, your concealment drops by 10.3. So that's quite nice and you can see your detectability range by air is 6.9, which is the same range as your firing range for your AA guns, which is fantastic. Um, and then a rather sm small uh, detectability range uh, from firing uh, guns and smoke. So you always have to be conscious of that number. So yeah, and then for slot six, you have four options. Yeah, the main battery from modification three, which uh, the main battery reload time is reduced by negative 12%. Your main battery traverse speed, however, takes a hit and now will traverse slower by 13%. And just to show you what your main battery traverse speed is right now, 180 degree turn time is 20.7 seconds. So it's, it's not bad by any means. You just have to be mindful um, depending on what you're doing. Um, and then you also, as we said, your main, it's your reload time is dropped by negative 12%. Uh, so basically this means that you go from, I think it's 4.8 seconds is the stock. Yeah, your stock reload is 4.8 seconds. Um, and now we're dealing with a 4.2 seconds. So I want to increase my DPM and this can, this allows you to have multiple shells in the air um, when you have a target you know, moderate middle range distance away um, before they start hitting the target. You have the torpedo tubes, uh, torpedo tubes modification two. You have gunfire control modification three, which this will extend your main battery firing range. So um, you'll go from 16.5 to oof, over, is that over 18? I think, but your shell arc and your shell velocity travel time is so long that it's likely that you're not going to be able to hit uh, 
targets as accurately as you can when you go further out. So something like increasing your DPM is better in my opinion. And if you want to make more of an AA build, you could always take the auxiliary armaments modification too, but I like to focus on her guns um, and dishing out a lot of damage. So we spent enough time on that, it's 40, 50, uh, over 13 minutes in. All right, so let's look at the commander. So for, oof, because this isn't, this is a little different. Um, so starting out my first uh, skill point, I will spend it on last stand. So the ship remains partially able to sustain speed and maneuverability with the engine and steering gears um, incapacitated. So this is nice rather than being dead in the water because the Neptune is so squishy with that immense citadel. Um, you want to keep uh, moving as best as you can. For a three point commander, um, I actually recommend taking priority target because the more aware and alert you are that there is uh, ships targeting you. Um, it helps you to look on lookout for shells to actively maneuver and also tells you perhaps if there's a destroyer lining torpedoes up on you. Um, so that for me is uh, the no-brainer uh, for the third point skill. Then you have, this could be up to you, you have the adrenaline rush or you have the superintendent. Personally for me, I think I would take Superintendent uh, as my uh, six-point skill. Um, this is three points, but six-point captain. Um, because you get that additional heal in the heals uh, for the light cruiser line, especially like you know Neptune and Minotaur, um, they're so big. It's like a super. It feels like a super heal because you can usually heal back so much damage, um, and you can find yourself in a situation where you need it as well as getting that additional smoke screen and additional hydroacoustic search. Um, it helps you stay in the game a bit longer. And then for your uh, 10 point commander, I would recommend for the, the last of those four points to go towards concealment expert, uh, which gets you down to that nice 10.3 uh, kilometer detection range by C uh, with the, uh, you know, also having that camouflage on. So that's, this is what I'd recommend for a 10 point commander, would be these four skills. Um, after that, I would recommend uh, for a 13 point commander, uh, the next get Adrenaline Rush, which what this does is it enhances the ship parameters for each 1% of HP lost. So your main battery reload time, your secondary battery reload time, and your torpedo tube reload time is gonna be reduced by negative 0.2%, and your continuous AA damage is going to be increased. Um, so that means you could be getting your, uh, that 4.2 second reload, uh, down under four seconds. Um, you could be looking at, you know, 3.9, 3.8 seconds. If I'm thinking correctly, even, you know, maybe it's a little lower than that. Um, but not much lower, but it um, increases your DPM. So that works really well on top of your, uh, torpedo tube reload time. Uh, so your torpedo to reload time as is, is, oh, it's 86.4 seconds, but that's with uh, the fill the tube skill. So stock your torpedo tube reload time is 96 seconds. Um, and now we have that 86.4 seconds after 10%. Um, so this skill synergizes really well with the fill the tube skill. Um, and the reason why the radar and hydroacoustic search uh, was showing longer than normal already was because I had the consumable enhancements. But let's back up before I'm, I'm kind of getting a little bit ahead of myself. So 13 point commander skill, uh, I'd go for the adrenaline rush. And then for a 15 point commander, which one of these two would I do first? I think honestly, I would do, oof. I think I would do fill the tubes because one, like like I said, it energize, synergizes with adrenaline rush really well, but your torpedoes are so good. You have that 10 kilometer range and a modest 62 uh, knots for the torpedo speed, um, but it helps you um, 
one, get more damage, uh, but two is also what I call it, gateway keeping is what I call it. Um, because the torpedo tubes on the Neptune, pull it up here, uh, both of them sit here uh, side by side. And as I want to exit out of that view, um, she's got pretty good torpedo tube angles um, for the most part, but you get eight torpedo tubes for each side. Um, so then you can really utilize, you know, with that rudder shift, uh, you get dump eight torpedoes off, um, you turn, you dump the other eight off. So then you've got 16 torpedoes um, in the water on a potential target, maybe something that's like a battleship or a cruiser uh, is pushing in on you. Then for a 17 point commander, then I would recommend taking the consumables enhancements, which is an attack skill. And so what this does is increases your action time of your hydroacoustic search, your surveillance radar, and your smoke generator, uh, and then as well as engine boost, but you don't get engine boost on Neptune. So you're always gonna get two of the four uh, options on here. So, you know, if you switch from your hydro, uh, or if you switch between your surveillance radar and the smoke generator, um, those are always gonna have a, a buff, um, a plus on there. So I forgot that I had this skill uh, mounted, which was uh, giving you increased duration on the uh, smoke uh, well on the hydroacoustic search and the surveillance radar. So that really helps um, a lot. So that's what I would recommend doing with a 17 point commander. Now you can see I have, I'm at an 18 point right now. I saw 14 points or four more, three more points left to get to a 21 point commander. Can't talk. Um, so that means uh, with my four points left, what would I like to do? Uh, for me personally, I intend to go with the radio location skill. And I will tell you why that is. So what this does is that after you've mastered this skill, the player will have the direction of the nearest enemy ship indicated to them, but the enemy ship will also be alerted that a bearing was taken on their ship, which is when they get that little, like maybe you as a player, you notice know, so you get that little located uh, icon. Um, that means someone is using the radio location um, uh, skill on you. I think it was, used to be called radio position frequency. Uh, RPF is what you'll see players in chat uh, reference this skill as. And more of the reason why I personally want to take this is when you're in a situation, let's say you, you're you like my current build, why right? I'm running the smoke generator right now, um, and I don't have the surveillance radar, if I'm dealing with a destroyer and I want to know what direction um, he is, uh, since he'll probably be, likely be closest to me, um, then I'll have an idea where he is. If either A, I am pursuing him, or B, let's say I'm in a smoke screen and hopefully I have either acoustic search going if it's not on cooldown, um, I can kind of angle a bit better uh, towards those potential torpedoes coming, or just leave that smoke screen altogether. Um, so as you can see, it's listed here as an attack skill. So this would be what I would recommend doing with a 21 point uh, commander for the Neptune. Um, there could be two other options. And the Neptune has actually decent AA. I mean, the Wooster is a bit better um, with the continuous damage and the damage by shell explosions, but you have this AA gunner. So let's say you're just really annoyed with uh, CVs and attacking you, whether, you know, tier eight, tier 10 CVs. Uh, you take this skill, um, watch how the continuous damage jumps up as well as the damage by shell explosions jumps up. So you go to 409 continuous damage and you go to 2016 at damage by shell explosions. Uh, for myself, I find when I'm in Neptune facing tier eight CVs um, that I do rather well. Um, I've been able to mostly demolish like a, a fighter squadron or like a Lexington's, um, what was it? I think it was a torpedo squadron coming in on me or something like that in a ranked match. And I pretty much took all the planes out. I don't know if he didn't have them upgraded. Um, their health pulls because it kind of felt like they went down too easy. Um, but against tier 10 CVs, uh, then maybe this comes a bit more beneficial um, to you. 
So you could do that, or let's say you want, this would be kind of like my bottom recommendation, or uh, if you want to do a little bit more, you know, expert AA marksman, which uh, your priority A sector AA damage is increased by 25%, and you get additional uh, shell explosion in your AA salvos, and then it's like that. So then your torpedoes um, go from 62 knots to 65 knots, and your main battery traverse speed goes from, well, that was 20.7 seconds to 18.7 seconds. So you could really do that if uh, you wanted to. But I would recommend uh, RPF first and foremost. But if you want to enhance uh, her AA capabilities, uh, by all means, um, you can take the uh, AA gunner. And I realize I just compared Neptune to a tier 10 uh, cruiser like the Rooster. So let's look at what uh, Seattle has for AA defense. So 341, 1680. Okay, so the Neptune has a higher continuous damage, um, but less damage by shell explosions. So they, they kind of uh, flip there. So that gives you maybe a bit more accurate uh, representation. Uh, why don't I take the some of the other skills? Well, we kind of talked about the build with that. I mean, your torpedoes, you know, you can use those points elsewhere. Um, over grease the gears or the swift fish. You I mean you have decent bat main battery traverse speed already, and 62 knots to 65 knots. Yeah, I mean that's nice, but uh, it's not worth to me to take those points um, into that. Uh, you don't need incoming fire alert because you already have priority targets. Um, and you can kind of see they have all these skills crossed out too. <laughs> so you actually don't get too many options. I mean, you don't have HE, just only AP on Minotaur. Um, we talked about this skill. Um, you get the uh, enhanced torpedo explosive charge. So your torpedo damage increases by 15%. So torpedo damage is 16,767. You go to 19,282. <laughs> uh, so if you wanted to make, let's say, a torpedo build minotaur, you could actually do something like that if you really wanted to um, with those last four points. So that, that could be funny. Um, but yeah. You have survivability expert, which increases your health pool uh, for each tier of the ship. So as an example, your survivability uh, fully upgraded with the, the last module, the B hull, is 44,900. If you took survivability expert, uh, you'd be increased to 48,050, but I mean, really, you should only be using this for uh, destroyers, uh, to be honest. Uh, you also have top grade gunner. Uh, this increases or reduces your secondary battery reload time. So if you took that, your secondary battery reload um, drops to uh, 2.7 seconds. Um, but then you also get the can be activated, which means increases the ship reload speed of the main battery if there is a visible ship within your ship's standard detectability range. Ch uh, changes to ship detectability caused by firing main guns, fires on board, and other combat events are not taken into account. Um, so, in looking at this skill, Actually, I thought it was within secondary range, but that's for the battleships, not cruisers. Um, so your main battery reload time, as we've discussed, is right now it's 4.2 seconds. But if you get in within, there's a ship within your standard detectability range, which would mean, my understanding is, would be 10.3 kilometers. If you, if I'm mistaken, correct me in the comments. But uh, you get that 8% uh, taken off which would drop you to 8.2, well, uh, I totally wrote that wrong, 4.2, 4.2, gosh, I can't write or type, uh, 3.86 seconds. So you could do that. Um, Maybe you would benefit on half having enemy destroyer near or around you uh, with that. Um, but ideally, I would argue, 
you would want to stay outside of the detectability range um, when it comes to cruisers and battleships specifically. Um, because, you know, as you're using your smoke screen, you smoke up and then you get uh, your smoke firing penalty range is 6.6 kilometers. Um, and then if you disengage, um, you want to be able to, um, you want to have the distance. You don't want to just smoke up five kilometers within a cruiser or enemy battleship. You know, that's just, uh, your, your guns, your, oh, how am I, what am I trying to say? Uh, if your detectability because of your smoke firing penalty become obvious and, um, it's worthless. Um, but she doesn't really, unless you're angling well, um, you're basically just waiting to be dev struck, um, by enemy battleships or even, uh, enemy cruisers. So it's not worth it to me to try to get in, uh, to that standard detectability range in order to get that, uh, you know, from 4.2 seconds to that 3.86 seconds or whatever it was. Um, and this is a, a can be activated skill. It's not, a, it's not a buff you have all the time. So, uh, for that, I wouldn't recommend it. You also have the outnumbered skill, which is really hard to do, which basically means you, you have to be overextended. Um, and this is the, another can be activated skill. So it improves your ship's characteristics. If there are more visible enemy ships than allies within your firing range of your ship's main battery, uh, maximum dispersion of your main battery shells is reduced by negative 10% and your ship speed is increased by plus 8%. Um, it's really hard. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of like a dead eye for cruisers, if you will, to a certain extent, but this means you have to be overextended. You have to be more closer to enemy ships than your allied ships. Um, and Neptune just doesn't play that way. Um, she's not some beefy cruiser, maybe like, you know, a German cruiser or um, a heavy cruiser or battle cruiser um, per se. So for me, this is kind of, uh, yeah, I would rather not uh, put my four points here because it's really hard to activate this skill. So that's why I don't recommend taking it. And we've talked about everything else. So this is what I intend to take. Uh, it's a more standard uh, Neptune build. Um, there's other um, really good uh, World of Worship players and community contributors that would run something uh, quite similar to this um, before the uh, Commander rework. Um, this being the post-Commander rework as this uh, videos come out during the 0.10.2 update. Um, but this is what I would recommend to take. And again, this is just my opinion. If you want to go for something that's a more, uh, you want to take advantage of torpedoes in Neptune, you can do that build. If you want to do more damage to aircraft, you could um, do this build. If you want to be dicey and get in uh, close, you can take the top grade gunner skill. So you've kind of got those, I would say those are more or less your three uh, other three main options, but for me, uh, I like this skill. Um, right now, I only run it on my Japanese uh, torpedo destroyers, but it works out well for something like the Neptune and even possibly Minotaur, um, as I just got the Minotaur yesterday as of recording this video, and so I need to get the hang of her before I do a video on her. But I'm building this captain up as if she was going to be on my Minotaur, if that helps you for those who are wondering about a Minotaur commander build. So I hoped you appreciated this video. Uh, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe if you wanna see more. And if you haven't subscribed, thanks, really appreciate it. Uh, as I intend to try to roll out these upgraded commander build videos uh, at least once a week. And so far that's been Saturday every week. So until next time, take care.